So over the years, and especially recently, I've had a lot of people ask me if I would build uh, some antennas for uh, 4G, 4G LTE. And uh, this is going to be the first one. Now, this one I'm going to show you how to build today will work um, sub 1 gigahertz, so around uh, 900 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. And it will also work at around uh, 1.9 megahertz up to around 2.3 gigahertz so the lower band uh, below uh, one gigahertz what you get with that one is more range but you get less speed and uh, the higher frequency into uh, the uh, two gigahertz band you get less range but you get greater speed so this is a nice uh, compromise antenna a dual band antenna it's also quite wide in its frequency of operation although with anything like this when you're trying to cover such a wide area you will always sacrifice gain so it's not exactly a powerful antenna it's going to give you about 3 db um, in the sub 1 gigahertz uh, range and it's going to give you about uh, 4 4.5 up in the uh, 2 gigahertz range and that's something you just can't uh, get over One, once you make um, an antenna that covers such a wide band like this you will always sacrifice gain gain it's just physics at work so to make this I'm going to use some uh, brass brazing rod it's uh, 1.5 millimeters thick and this is uh, 300 uh, millimeters long really nice to work with as opposed to uh, copper or brass because it has a springiness to it um, I'm going to use a sharpie as well to put uh, my marks on so I can put my bends in here I'm going to use some digital calipers but you could use a ruler instead and I'm also going to use my favorite uh, long nose pliers for making antennas with so to start off with then we're going to start making the, the antenna here so we're going to make uh, these little squares first and uh, if you have a look on this one what these little squares do is make um, the antenna here uh, inductive and an inductive antenna uh, is too long so it will enable us to make uh, this small footprint antenna resonant at uh, such a low frequency of uh, 900 megahertz to uh, 1 gigahertz uh, without these uh, inductive squares in here then uh, the antenna will be way way too big so we're going to start off bend in here and put this bend in here first so to start the antenna off then I've got my uh, calipers here set at 10 millimeters I'm just going to put a little mark and put my first bend in and then for my second mark I'm going to put my calipers right in the middle of that first bend here although this is a pretty uh, forgiving antenna if you're off by a millimeter it's not going to make that much difference it is a pretty forgiving uh, design there we go can straighten it up a little bit at the end as well so my next measurement is 20 millimeters from here to here so again using my calipers Roughly in the middle of that corner there, pop a little mark and then put a right angle bend in again. And next we've got 19.5 millimetres. And this time it's not quite a right angle bend, we've got an angle going on here. put in a uh, slight bend in like that we can uh, alter the angle when we've got it all constructed later but uh, next we want uh, 15 millimeters measuring off from here to here and again not quite a right angle bend and then 15 millimeters from here to here And now we've just got to repeat here what we did over there. 
So once you've got everything as straight as possible, it's time to do some soldering to this now. Now the first thing we're going to do is close these two loops here to add inductance to uh, the uh, design. So we need to solder these in place to close these loops. Now the best way to do this is just to uh, pre-tin where you're going to be soldering. And then get yourself some uh, needle nose pliers. Try and do this on uh, camera. Maybe if I do this one, add a little bit of pressure. Add a little bit of pressure. Now I've got my uh, two loops soldered up, I've now got inductance in my antenna. So next we're going to solder on the uh, three legs, we've got two legs at 20 millimeters and one at 15. And I want to solder on these at a slight angle, roughly following this angle here. Of course, pre tinning really helps. Finally, the shorter one in the middle. So, I've prepared a length of coax as you can see here. I've uh, stripped away the outer braid of this and then prepared a new feed. Uh, an L-shaped feed as you can see here. What I'm going to do is cover this in heat shrink tubing all the way up to here and I'm going to solder the antenna on on these two points here. So it's going to look something like this when it's finished but I need to put some heat shrink tube in here just to make doubly sure that we don't short out any element that we don't want to short out. So that's the antenna finished but um, it's a little bit weak in this area so I'm going to use some epoxy putty just to add a little bit of strength in there and tidy things up a little bit. So here we have the uh, antenna under test then and uh, if we look at the network analyzer we're getting a very nice output. So looking at the output then and scanning from 10 megahertz over here all the way up to uh, 3 gigahertz over here and we've got this first dip here around about uh, 1 gigahertz it goes pretty much from around 900 uh, megahertz or so all the way down here up to about 1.2 1 1.23 gigahertz so a really nice dip there then this second dip here is a really wide dip all the way from uh, around 1.8 gigahertz all the way down through 2 gigahertz, 2.1 gigahertz, 2.3 gigahertz all the way up to about 2.5 gigahertz so a really nice wideband antenna and as I said the problem is with uh, a multiband antenna like this is you do sacrifice gain which is why you know it's just a, a small antenna around uh, 5 dBi across the board here we're going to have uh, a little bit less uh, gain here than we do here so we're probably going to have about uh, 2 maybe 3 dB of gain and around here probably 4 dB of gain so yeah not the most powerful antenna in the world but a nice one to start off building first a nice wideband antenna that should work uh, really well now as we saw from the uh, network analyzer it is going to perform uh, rather well across uh, that band of uh, 4G LTE. Um, I did do a VSWR check off camera and uh, around the 1 gigahertz mark I was getting uh, 1.8 uh, which is uh, edging up to a little bit high but still acceptable and around the 2 gigahertz mark I was getting uh, around uh, 1.5 which uh, is a little bit better but uh, as I say when you make a multi-band uh, antenna like this one you do sacrifice gain and the best this is going to perform at 
is probably about uh, 4.5 dBi to be realistic. And of course on your setup you want uh, two of these and try to keep them at a distance as uh, far apart as possible. That's uh, one thing you can uh, experiment with with these kind of antennas uh, with uh, the speed factor. Uh, this kind of a sweet spot to have the antennas apart from each other to get the uh, highest speed possible that uh, you can get through uh, you know the signal that you can receive and uh, the equipment that you're using uh, there's a little bit to that but uh, yeah as a uh, first antenna I thought uh, we'd pick this one first to take a look at and uh, make some more specific uh, frequency builds uh, you know we'll do a build for uh, one gigahertz in the future uh, a one gigahertz bi quad and then uh, we'll build one for the uh, slightly higher frequencies um, try and keep the uh, gain that the bi quad can output and uh, you know try and make it a little bit wider across that uh, two gigahertz range there so the PDF for this uh, the measurements will be available for download in the description if you want to have a go at uh, making this pretty simple really um, you know if you've got the tools then you can knock up a couple of these in an afternoon no problem at all so if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one